It's Amanda the CMA here again. If you are a returning viewer and hopefully a subscriber, welcome back. If you are new to my channel, I talk about anything and everything medical assisting and beyond. Today we are talking about an awesome physician. Last time we talked about an awesome medical assistant. Today we are talking about an awesome physician and he is actually my physician that I work for. There are good physicians and there are not so great physicians to work for and I think that I got a good one. So I just wanted to make this video real quick and hopefully you guys enjoy. See what an awesome physician consists of. So keep watching. Here we go. I've been working with my physician for a little over two years now. Actually, no, it's been two and a half years. I've been working with my physician for two and a half years. We are an OBGYN specialty. As I've said before, he specializes really in endometriosis. I kind of went over what that is. He does do infertility treatment as well. We're a slightly advanced infertility clinic and we do partner with an actual infertility clinic that is off grounds. I work with a lot of great physicians. Everybody I work with is so great but obviously my physician is the best, I will tell you that. Um, he has been practicing for a very long time. He's been at our clinic, I believe, for about 13 years, and then he was at a different clinic before that. He's been, so he's been practicing forever, and his dad was actually a small town physician also, so he's kind of following in his footsteps. We actually do have really good teamwork. The longer that you work with a physician, the better that you're gonna to get to know them. So for anybody out there that works one-on-one -on -one with a physician and you haven't been with them that long, give it time. Always give it time because you're not gonna know right away how they work and they are not gonna know right away how you work either. So it did take us a little bit of time to figure that out, but Right now, we work amazing and we kind of have trade-offs. I'll do something <laughs> for him and he does something for me. It's kind of like a give and take thing, which really that's what it should be. A medical assistant and whoever they work for, whether it be a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant, physician, they should really have a give and take relationship and I think that we've quite achieved that. He really has let me over the past two and a half years really grow and really get to learn a lot about what he does and his specialties. So I really, I've learned a lot. I, I think that I learn a lot more than a lot of other people that are even in my clinic. I learn a lot more than them also just because he's been letting me be a part of patient care. He's so willing to talk about and teach me how things work and just the way that he practices and how our specialty in endometriosis really works. So it's been, it's been amazing and I have learned so much from him. I've learned more from him than I have with any other physician or other provider that I've had the chance to work with. So my physician is really busy. Um, I wouldn't say that any other physician isn't busy, but when you're in the OBGYN field, you don't just do clinic work. You also do surgery, you does clinic, some things with infertility at the other clinic that we partner with, and you have to balance home life. He does actually have a radio show too. I think he's still in a band too. He's in a band. I asked him what his band plays, like what kind of music do you play? And he just said, nothing anybody would ever want to listen to. I, th I thought that was really funny and I'm going to take his word for it. He actually does keep a guitar at both locations that he goes to. You know that he's either playing it because he's in a really good mood 
or he's playing it because he's in a bad mood and he just does not want to be there, which that sometimes happens. We feel that way too as medical assistants. His way of caring for patients, it's not about how quickly he can see patients. It's about the quality of care for the patient and making sure that the patient understands what we're trying to tell them and all of their options. He always says that he could spend all day with a patient, but really our schedule doesn't allow that. We have patients every 15 or 30 minutes. It really doesn't, you can't spend all day with a patient, let's be honest. So he's always said that it's more about getting, being able to bond with that patient and being able to just sit down and talk with the patient. That's the really good part of the care. And I agree with him on a lot of levels because of that. So I think that it's really good to have that patient care and that patient bonding. And he also lets me have that with patients since I, I do call them a lot. And a lot of times it's supposed to be the physician that calls, but a lot of my patients have come to the level of trust where if I tell them something, then they really trust me. I have learned so much that I can sit there and I can counsel the patient over the phone on what they talked about at their last visit. And he really appreciates that. So it's kind of a give and take. With some physicians, their nurses or medical assistants get calls because the patients didn't really understand everything that was said or they still have questions. I'm really lucky with my physician. I maybe get one every one to two months maybe and it's probably because the patient hasn't been seen in six months and they forgot what other options they have. That's quite reasonable and I'm really thankful for that. Patients are going to call with questions too, especially about endometriosis and their plan of care. And I will put this out there, there will always be patients that you really don't want to talk to on the phone. I think my longest phone call with a patient was about 45 minutes. And it wasn't even a plan of care. It was just all over the place. I don't even remember what the call was about, but it was about a 45 minute conversation with the patient. So what I've worked out with my physician is that if it's a patient that I really don't have, I wouldn't say time to talk to them, but if I'm really on a crunch schedule, we've got patients here, um, and then there's somebody that I know that they're gonna wanna talk to me and catch up. And sometimes these are patients that I really like that he will give them a call because I want to make sure that we're getting patients in the room. He can call them later. That tends to be the best way to go about it. Oh, my sinuses. Oh. He really trusts me with everything that I do, and he is always there to stick up for me if there's ever a problem. And I think that's the way it should be with a physician. Overall, my doctor is just... We're crazy. We're just super crazy and we're so fun. Um, my One of my favorite pastimes is actually swearing. <laughs> I know that sounds really goofy. One of my favorite pastimes is swearing and me and him, like, we're on the comfort level that we're, we can just lay it out there like, oh, this and, th you know, just talk about things that way and it's so fun. Just the way that we interact, even not like patient care wise. You no, know, hi, how are you doing? I listen to your radio, sh radio show. I was on your radio show last night. Radio. Your radio show. <laughs> I did it again. I listened to your radio show last night. I saw on Facebook what your radio show was going to be about. Did you get anybody that had a really weird question? I recently told him that I have a YouTube channel. He was like, What? He's like, Are you serious? you have a YouTube channel. He's like, well, what is it about? And I said, well, it's about medical assisting. And he was like, that's such a great idea. I was like, well, let me go get the next patient. He's like, no, 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 pull up a chair. He took his laptop. <laughs> he didn't know how to get to YouTube, but he actually ended up Googling it. And it brought up my intro video, which hopefully you guys have seen because it's kind of awesome. I will... I will admit it, it is kind of awesome. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. And he's like, man, he's like, this is so cool that you want to go out there and you want to educate people on how things really are because he is such a big advocate for endometriosis. Not a lot of people know about endometriosis. And he is a very big advocate to make sure that everybody has the correct information and that they know what it is. And he's like, you're 
pretty much doing the same thing right here and he fist bumped me and I didn't think he knew what a fist bump was because you know he's middle-aged and that was kind of weird <laughs> so I don't even know if he actually watches my YouTube videos but I know that he's really supportive of it and I thought that was super cool <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Me talking about my physician a little bit. Hopefully this is a short video. Hopefully it's not that long. You guys have been so great. You have been so great. I wanted to thank you guys for that because I think it's it's so amazing that people are so interested and so supportive of the videos that I'm doing. Um, it's just, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Thank you guys for watching today. Hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye guys.